Good evening and welcome to the Fairfield Good evening and welcome to the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District's Governing Board meeting. This meeting is being held pursuant to Executive Order N2920 issued by California Governor Gavin Newsom on March 12, 2020. Any or all board members may attend the meeting by phone. Members of the public may attend at the Fairfield Sassoon Central Office, 2490 Hillborn Road, Fairfield, California, to observe and provide public comment during the meeting. Board members will state their name when they make the motion and when they make the second. All votes will re be recorded via roll call format. May we have the roll call, please? Eric Cortez. Here. Joan Gott. Here. Judy Honeychurch. Here. David Isom. David Isom. Jonathan Richardson. Here. John Silva. Here. Bethany Smith. Here. Craig Wilson. Here. I just want to mention that David Isom is attending the meeting. For some reason, his sound is off, but he is here. Okay, moving on to B. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? Jonathan Richardson moves. Bethany Smith, second. Eric Cortez. Yes. Vote. Oh, yes, sorry. Joan Gott. And Scott, would you unmute? Are you voting? Yes, it, it came up again. Thank you. It disappeared. Yes. Judy Hunter. <clears throat> Aye. David Isom. John Silva. Aye. Craig Wilson. Aye. Is that it? Okay, we are going to um, be moving to closed session. Uh, is there any public comment on the closed session? Sorry, there's no public. Hearing no. Um, I just want to make everybody know for the record that our board our boardroom is open. We are practicing social distancing, and there are no members of the public currently at this time wishing to speak. Thank you. Um, we are going to be adjourning to closed session uh, to discuss um, and possible have and have possible action on matters of student discipline, personnel, negotiations, and litigation. We will now move to closed session.
Not yet. The Sunny Church. Good evening, and welcome to the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District's Governing Board meeting. This meeting is being held pursuant to Executive Order N2920 issued by California Governor Gavin Newsom on March 12, 2020. Any or all board members may attend the meeting by phone. Members of the public may attend at the Fairfield Sassoon Unified, uh, Fairfield Sassoon Central Office, 2490 Hillborn Road, Fairfield, California, to observe and provide public comment during the meeting. Board members will state their name when they make the motion and when they make the second. All votes will be recorded via roll call format. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to. I pledge allegiance to the flag to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Superintendent Corey, would you please uh, give the report for closed session? Thank you, President Honeychurch. In the matter of conference with labor negotiators, no action was taken. Um, in the matter with conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, no action taken. In the matter of public employment, it is my honor to announce by unanimous vote that the board has officially appointed Sherry McCormick as principal of Nelda Mundy Elementary effective tomorrow. I'm going to read a little bit about um, Ms. McCormick. Ms. Sherry McCormick is, um, is recommended for the principal of Nelda Mundy Elementary. She started with the district in 1993 as a substitute teacher and a temporary intercession teacher. She was hired full-time as a classroom teacher at B. Gail Wilson. And in 2006, she moved to assistant principal at Armio High School before moving on to be assistant principal and then principal at Semieto High School. She began her current assignment of assistant principal at Nelda Mundy in 2017. Best thing about it too is she's made in Fairfield um, so soon. She was a graduate of Fairfield High School. Ms. McCormick earned her Bachelor's of Art degree from California State University, Chico, and went on to earn her multiple subject teaching credential, administra educational administrative services credential, and Master's of Arts in Education from Chapman University. We are so thrilled and proud to have Ms. Sherry McCormick serve as our principal of um, Nelda Mundy Elementary beginning immediately. Congratulations, Sherry McCormick. Also, in, by unanimous vote, our board has appointed Mr. John Daly as the Coordinator of Educational Services and um, Special Education beginning July 1st, 2020. Mr. Daly has worked in the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District since 2015 in the role of classroom teacher, behavior intervention specialist, and most recently as a behavior analyst. He also worked as an interventionalist for the UC David Vine Institute and is a board certified behavior analyst. He graduated from Chico State University, Sacramento with a Bachelor of Arts in Child Development and then gained his Master's of Art Education degree with a concentration on special education from the same institution. We are so pleased to have Mr. John Daly as the position of Coordinator of Educational Services special education. Congratulations, Mr. Daly. There was no other action taken in closed session. Thank you, Superintendent Corey. I do have a short uh, opening statement. Currently, there is important business that the governing board needs to conduct. So to follow the shelter at home protocol, board members are attending this meeting virtually from their homes. Additionally, on behalf of the governing board, I would like to express our deep gratitude for the hardworking staff members who are making working from a distance as successful as possible. 
Thank you. Moving on now to communications, I will turn this over to Eric to read the students of the month. <clears throat> Thank you. Our first student of the month is George Bostock from the Public Safety Academy. George Bostock, a 12th grader from Public Safety Academy, has been selected as one of the district's students of the month for April 2020. George has demonstrated exemplary leadership skills and is a role model for his peers. While attending PSA, George has participated in the cadet leadership program, holding ranks of sergeant, lieutenant, captain, and commander. As an executive officer, he not only leads the academy, but also trains cadets in grades 5 through 12 to serve as ranking officers. George leads by example, consistently modeling good character and demonstrating a high level of integrity. He is well respected by his peers and staff members. George is committed to academic excellence and has maintained a 3.22 GPA. Additionally, he completed the emergency medical response and emergency medical technician college courses and is a certified EMT. He is able to assist with a variety of medical needs at PSA. He serves as an explorer with the Fairfield Fire Department and was named Explorer of the Year in February 2019. George will work as an EMT while attending the Fire Academy and plans to be a Fire Department paramedic. We congratulate you, George Bostock, for being honored tonight as one of the district students of the month for April. And I believe we have a, a video of him with his acceptance speech, correct? We do, we're having a few technical difficulties. We're gonna rewind it and turn it way up. Or simply unmute it. I think we didn't. Well, we practiced it and it worked and unfortunately it doesn't look like it's working for us. So we're gonna go on to um, the next one, Mr. Cortez, student board member Cortez. All right, our next student of the month is Felix Dooley from Early College High School. Felix Dooley, a 12th grader in Early College High School has been selected as one of the district's students of the month for April, 2020. In the beginning of high school at early college, Felix struggled a great deal and missed a lot of school due to severe anxiety. He was placed on academic probation and was almost unable to continue at ECHS. However, with hard work and determination, he has gotten back on track, raised his GPA, and has even made the honor roll the last two semesters. He is on track to graduate from high school this June, at which point he will have completed 36 college units towards his bachelor degree. Felix has been a leader in both the drama and GSA clubs and is well liked and respected by his classmates. Felix is kind hearted and truly inspires everyone around him. It has not been an easy road, but Felix truly represents what ECHS is all about. We congratulate Felix for being honored tonight as one of the district students of the month for April 2020. Do we want to try it one more time, see if we can get the presentation up. Yeah. 
Good evening, members of the board. My name We'll just be patient for just another minute. Here it goes. Let's see if it works. We will make sure that both of their acceptance videos are placed on our website so that people can see them. Okay, so we'll make sure that those presentations are placed on our website so people can see them. But congratulations to our two students of the month. It was great that we were able to honor them even in this virtual manner. Moving on to communication, uh, B, written report, uh, Solano County investment report for the first quarter ending September 30th, 2019, and second quarter 2019-20, and ending December 31st, 2019. There is no presentation. Is there any public comment? Hearing no public comment, is there any board discussion? I move okay, that we we'll move on to C. Um, it's, this is just information, Joan, so okay. that's okay. We don't need to vote. Moving on to C, this is a, another written report. It's the quarterly report on Williams Uniform Complaint. Again, no presentation. Um, I'm assuming there is no public comment. Is there any board discussion on this item? Hearing none, we'll move on to D, 4D. It, again, another written report. Quarterly report for out-of-state travel, no presentation. Assuming no uh, comment, any board discussion? Hearing none, moving on to E, employee organization. Um, Ms. Sunny Church, have any I believe one you, there? Ms. Yes. Sunny Church, you're going to have to pause when yes. you say any board discussion because I do believe we had somebody who has something on the last agenda item. Ah, I'm moving too quickly. I'm sorry. I'll slow down. Going back to D then for out of state travel, was the, uh, Joan, did you have a comment? Yes, I did. I wanted to say congratulations to Ken and the crew that went to Atlanta, because I understand that we were able to sign five people to come and work for us. And I think that's really wonderful. It's it's a, it's good use of our out of state travel funds. And that was Damon Wright and Cheryl Jones, who traveled to Atlanta. And yep, they picked up oh, good. some good, good employees. So thank you. Good. Okay. Uh, now the employee organization is—is is there anyone, anyone there, uh, Superintendent Corey, to do a report? No, there is not. Okay, moving on to F. We'll move on to our student board member report. Uh, Mr. Cortez, do you have a report? Yes, I do. <clears throat> Thank you. So I wanted to start off by giving an update on Student Advisory Council. Uh, our fort unfortunately, our March meeting was canceled due to uh, the existing shelter in place uh, restrictions. And there, uh, there was never uh, an April meeting scheduled, uh, but there's still work for the advisory council uh, to do. We're looking at the application process for the next student board member and we'll likely be coordinating virtual interviews soon. So I will most likely have an update for you um, on that at our next meeting. And speaking of the future student board member, I've been working with Ms. Pierce to develop a student board member handbook. Um, we've been using Placer Union High School District's handbook as a starting point. Um, if you'll recall, I'd mentioned uh, previous meetings that we, uh, Mr. Wilson and I were actually at that workshop. That's where we had, they have a whole system set up for their incoming student board members. We're just looking to put together a simple handbook just so they don't go in without any information. And I hope to have the handbook's major edits and components complete by May. Um, and with that, I'd like to close my report. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Cortez. We'll now move on to the superintendent report. Ms. Superintendent Corey. 
Thank you, President Honeychurch. I have quite a bit to report, but first and foremost, happy birthday, early birthday to Martha Pierce, whose birthday's coming up. I always like to embarrass her. Um, we have spring break starting tomorrow, and um, you may have received some emails or questions or calls about spring break. We have in the superintendent's office it had inquiries as a, asking why we are having spring break when we're doing distance learning, why can't the learning continue? And um, this is a really important time for a number of reasons. First of all, I think uh, people are working very hard over these last this last month um, to get our distance learning up and running and to get people paid and um, our construction to continue. And so it is really important to have that break and to allow some time to rest and rejuvenate over this um, time. Additionally, um, our student calendar is negotiated. And so there are, it's based on the 180 days of instruction and our spring break does take into effect um, that these 180 days will be completed before June 13th. So just wanted to keep that up. I wanted to commend our staff who did a fabulous senior night virtual presentation a week ago. Uh, we had over 900 people who tuned in for the English version that evening and 90 people who tuned in for the Spanish version. Those uh, presentations have since been posted to YouTube and they continue to get a lot of views. And so it was very valuable information. Um, our technology support services team is commended for helping us make this happen. Our director of secondary education, Kristen Witt, Kudos to her because she worked diligently with our counselors and our secondary administrators to bring forth this presentation. And then um, for the Spanish version, our district translator, Shirley uh, Chavarria, did a fabulous job in translating that information to all of our Spanish speaking families. So kudos to our staff of this. We could have sent an email or we could have sent a letter home we wanted to try something different to connect with our community and i think it was a very successful event as evidenced by the numbers of viewers that we had tonight we uh approved a principalship and i just wanted to tell you that interviews continue we are still hiring a lot of teachers and other staff and we also have some assistant principals that we are in process of hiring um, we did make some changes and um, this year due to how the formula is that we assign principals or assistant principals Talinas elementary actually is in the process of hiring an assistant principal and then cleo gordon and sheldon next year will not um, have assistant principals because of how the um, funding is allocated to those school sites I also want to give a shout out to our student services staff because once again, Fairfield Sassoon has been recognized by the California Department of Education. The district has been recognized for being a model to others for the um, uh, model SARB, Student Attendance Review Board, uh, throughout the state of California. So that's a great recognition for our staff. So um, congratulations to them. Some people have been asking about, what about our preschoolers? How are we meeting the needs of our preschoolers during distance learning? And so we have been, uh, our preschool staff has been connecting with our preschool children and families through a variety of methods. Um, Seesaw, YouTube, classroom, Google Classroom, phone calls, emails, FaceTime, packets. Um, and so they've created and shared many videos and activities for children to view. They've been able to connect with about 96% of the students um, who, are eager to, who are eager to participate in the virtual learning. And they're continuing to call and email the remaining students each week to get them engaged. Staff worked with TSS to deploy iPads to students who did not have devices. Um, and this is just a quote from a mom who saw a teacher in the grocery store last week. Um, while waiting in line at the store with my mask on, a mom approached me and said, I want to know that your preschool te teachers are doing an incredible job. My son is totally entertained and he loves all the activities they are sending. Thank you so much. Um, students with IEPs are receiving their services identified in the IEPs. The related services providers are working with children on their caseload using distri the distri um, sorry, distance learning platform. 
uh, student connections during distance learning. Uh, we had some questions as to how many students are we meeting? Are we able to connect with all of our, our kids during this time? And as of April 9th, that's today, school site leaders and student services have been working and have made um, contact with about 94% of our student population. And that mirrors what our attendance rate is in the district. So we still have about 6% of our student population that we're continuing to reach out and to um, try to serve. And so they will continue to uh, do this work even through spring break. But we think that that's a pretty good percentage that we're connecting with during distance learning. I wanna talk about some of the challenges for child nutrition services. One of our departments that deserves so much um, appreciation and so much respect is our child nutrition services. They have been serving thousands of meals daily to our students at three of our school sites. And um, today they prepared for spring break and um, they received a waiver where uh, families could receive a box of meals to last them. So today they handed out 1,759 1, boxes containing 17,590 meals. They also uh, distributed 628 individual meals for cars that were in line when we ran out of food. So we actually ran out of those boxes to serve our children. Um, and we probably could have handed out twice as many boxes if only we had it, had them, um, because we have been working really hard to ensure that um, our families get fed. And so we anticipated we would have the same number of people who are coming uh, during the week to pick up these boxes. And unfortunately, we had a lot more. Uh, we could have made more individual meals, but one of the challenges that our child nutrition services is running into is getting supplies from our vendors. For example, our milk vendor is Berkeley Farms, <clears throat> and they indicated to the school district that they are closing their doors on April 30th. And so we don't have a milk vendor. And um, in order to ensure that we get reimbursable meals, there are certain components, one including milk, that has to be in the meal for us to count it as a reimbursable meal. So um, we are now uh, placing an order to get shelf-stable milk as a backup um, because of the increased demand throughout the state, but that won't be available until May 1st. And so our child nutrition department is requesting a waiver from the state to be able to serve meals without milk. Um, and so hopefully considering the circumstances, we will receive this waiver. We have 28 CSEA members and three uh, managers, child nutrition managers that are working um, at our school sites to provide meals for our students. And I wanna give a shout out to assembly member, Jim Frazier, who joined us at Grange and Fairview and Sassoon Elementary, or Sassoon Elementary to volunteer to hand out um, meals. It was really fun, I've, I've done that myself and it really helps to connect with the kids and remind them to read. And uh, Mr. Frazier gave us some materials. And so yesterday we were not only handing out meals, but coloring books. Uh, that showed how a bill becomes a law. So, um, and then just board members, I need to, oh, one of the things I wanted to mention is that our employees continue to be paid. I think that this is really important with the exception of some of our substitutes who have now applied for unemployment. But one thing that was concerning is people were wondering about their extended day stipends. You continue to approve those on the consent calendar. And I just wanted to let everybody know that those stipends will be honored, even though maybe their um, sports, uh, spring sports were cut short and their coaching responsibilities or whatnot it might be um, were cut short, we still are gonna honor the um, stipends and pay our employees. And then finally for board members, you have a board self-evaluation that is due. Um, we have, it is due tonight. We have three members, right, that still need to complete that evaluation. And so um, for those three members, we're going to ask at the end of the meeting for you to stay on this Google Hangout so that we can um, 
make sure that you do your uh, board self evaluation and know how to connect. That ends my report. Thank you, Superintendent Corey. Uh, we'll now move on to H, a uh, board discussion on its extended school closure. Um, do we have any public comment on this item? There is no Hearing public none, comment. I am going to turn it. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Chris Corey, who will introduce the. the yes, we're just going to start a discussion. So, um, as you are aware, our governor had put out an expectation along with our state superintendent that uh, school will not um, come back in session on campuses for the 2019-2020 school year. Uh, I just want to give a little history. So our district, we closed school first for two weeks. That was on a Friday. By Monday, we had uh, closed through spring break. And then about a week later, we closed through May 1st. Now, our, our, we have not put out an official uh, closure through the end of the year. I did put out what the um, expectation of, was of the governor, but we have not put anything out official. Um, we just wanted to have a conversation with the board tonight about school closures and what that impact might be um, and just have a discussion uh, regarding that, so I'm going to turn it back over to um, President Honeychurch, who will facilitate that discussion or questions. Thank you. And what I what I would like to do is go to, to each board member uh, in alphabetical order and ask uh, whether you have any questions or comments or things you'd like to discuss regarding uh, campus closure. So we'll start with our student board member, Mr. Cortez. Do you have any uh, questions or comments to make? Yes. Uh, so I was wondering if the closure for the rest of the school year, but the previous closures weren't something that the governing board voted on. Would this extended closure for the rest of the school year, I mean, in terms of in-person classes, this would still continue? Would that be something that we would vote on or how, how would that work? What does that look like? No, it's not anything that you vote on because um, the governing board does give me the authority to close schools. I just wanted to have a discussion with the uh, members of the board just so that when we do, um, when I do put that announcement out, that if there are things that are on your mind, that we make sure that we can address those with the community. I see. Um... Yeah, I honestly, there's nothing, nothing that I can say that hasn't been heard before. Because especially as a senior, I would really like for schools to come back into in-person classes. But if it's obviously it's there's there's benefits to the closure, and it's not a decision that's taken lightly at all. So, yeah, I, I have no further comment. Thank you. Yeah, I was telling uh, people that I was the eternal optimist, and I was trying to hold out particularly, you know, we did that during our fires and said, you know, we're gonna keep our schools open for those who can attend, but this is just a little bit different animal. And, um, you know, there's a lot that has gone into this, a lot of considerations. We know that even if we came back, um, large gatherings probably won't be happening even in June. So uh, the whole idea of graduation is something that we're going to have to rethink and reimagine in a different way in order to honor our seniors. Okay, Mrs. Scott, do you have any questions or comments? Yes, I, I am getting questions from parents about what's happening because they're not quite sure whether the kids are coming back or not, and they really would like something very definitive going out. Do you foresee that that Decision coming shortly, Mrs. Corey? Yes, after the conversation tonight, we anticipate that we'll put it out tomorrow, um, that the official will be, uh, that there will be no uh, returning to school campuses. Now, school will continue because we will still continue to teach right up until the end of the school year um, in June. Um, so that distance learning will continue, but it just won't be that where the, the students or the staff will physically show up at one of our campuses. 
Okay, another question that has been coming to me is how will our, particularly our high school students, be receiving grades uh, when we don't have everybody that's doing the online learning? Some are, some aren't. And how will we be able to do grades that will be fair to everybody? Um, that is a question that's come up quite frequently and we talked about it today. Oh, that was another thing I forgot during my report. We had our first um, virtual student leader meeting and our first virtual parent leader meeting and they went really well. And that came up actually in both the parent leader meeting and our student leader meeting. Um, one of the things that was stressed from the guidelines from the California Department of Ed is that our students would not be harmed by these school closures. So the last official reporting period is um, the grade that they would receive. Now they could better that grade, but they could never make that grade work. So um, we've had many conversations with our uh, educators and we are going to continue to issue grades. And so um, whatever the grade was on the uh, last progress report or the official uh, quarter grade, that would be their final grade, unless through distance learning, they have improved that grade. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Moving on to board member Isom. Comments or questions? Uh, yeah, I just wanna first say what a, what a fantastic job everyone's doing with this sudden closure uh, Friday the 13th. You know, it's kind of uh, jokingly is a bad day but that's actually the last day we had, you know, kids coming on our campuses, going, going to school. And so uh, to, to be able to scramble, literally scramble and, and put all of these things in place that have been put in place to take care of the education of our kids is phenomenal to uh, you know, shout out to our superintendent and her staff and, and all others. Um, last week, Ch Children's Network of Solano County put on a, a, um, a living room presentation it was about the census and making sure that our kids were counted because that's where the money is going to actually come from is through the census. And so uh, I just want to encourage any of the members of the public that are that are viewing or or when they play this back to make sure that 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 we um, fill out our census so that the kids are counted so that we can provide the type of educational services that we need to provide to our kids. I've even, um, you know, I'm on Facebook and in touch with a lot of members of the community. And there's some members of the community that, that kind of hold our feet to the fire when there's a problem. Um, and you certainly don't hear compliments from a lot of the folk. You know, you hear complaints, but not compliments. But one of the, a couple of the people that, that hold our feet to the fire that complain a lot to me as far as I'm concerned about things, um, they're really complimentary about how well, um, again, the, the our leader has, has stepped up and made these things happen. Parents are, are impressed with being able to have technical support um, from our IT staff. That's, 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 not, that's unheard of, um, the distant learning FAQs. So I just wanna just say, you know, whatever I, you know, we can do as a board to support um, what's happening, we, we, we should do that because it's a really, really, really good thing. That's my comments, thanks. Thanks, uh, Mr. Isom. Moving on to board member Richardson, comment. I am extremely ecstatic um, regarding um, the leadership of, of our superintendent, um, the staff. Um, you have done a phenomenal job um, dealing with adversity um, in ways that I believe that we could never ever imagine that you would produce. Um, one of the significant things um, that I've wanted to say as a board, and I'm, I'm thankful that we have this opportunity to speak specifically about our position regarding the school closures, is that this season gives not only um, us an opportunity to continue to innovate as a district as we have done so consistently over time, and how we've been so far ahead of the curve as it relates to technology, innovation and being resilient and now this gives us an opportunity as leaders to show our students what it truly means to be resilient our teachers our administrators all have produced in that way and um, I, I 
I applaud each and every one of you for what you've done to ensure that our students continue to be educated, that they continue to thrive in a ever changing world. And we are definitely living in that ever changing world. So thank you, Superintendent Chris Corey. Um, thank you, board colleagues for the work that you're doing on scene and behind the scenes and to all of our staff throughout the entire Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District to include our stakeholders and their families. Um, I commend everyone for their unique role and what they've done to make sure that we successfully impact our students' future, even if it means that we go completely digital. Thank you. It definitely has been a team effort, and I've just been so proud of our staff. We're very fortunate in Fairfield to soon to have such quality individuals who are always looking out for the best interest of our kids. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Mr. Silva? Uh, yeah, I, I don't have any questions, but I do have, you know, some comments. I'll try to not keep it too long. But I, I too, would like to commend our superintendent. Uh, and all of our FSU is the leadership that's having to deal with all of this uh, for hand. I mean, I, I just can't believe it. You know, in the last couple of years, we've, we've gone through floods, we've gone through fires, and now we've gone through medical emergency. I mean. And those I mean, floods and fires and power <laughs> outages seem like a piece of cake now. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I see we will go through this again. We'll have a lot of experience and hopefully it'll never happen again. But uh, I, I just, from my point of view, I mean, I, I just feel so bad and horrible for all the students. Um, you know, when, when I was a, a senior in high school, I mean, I, I was a, I was a, a three sport, you know, athlete and I would have been devastated had my, had my sports been canceled. And I can't even begin to imagine what it feels like for all of the kids that uh, do extracurricular activities, uh, whether it's sports or band or robotics or well, you know, where they're all going to competitions and they're looking forward to it. And there are scholarships that depend on this stuff uh, that are riding on, you know, the last performances of, of this time of the spring and uh, into the summer. So uh, hopefully those things can still materialize for those people that were looking for those, uh, you know, those ways to get into college, you know, kids that couldn't, can't afford it, but, you know, can possibly get scholarships. I mean, this is pretty devastating, I think, to, to students. Um, I, I don't see how they're, you know, we've got to do what we got to do, but I, I just think that it's a, it, it's a horrible loss for them, more so than anybody else in the district. But, uh, you know, they'll get through it. I mean, they'll get their high school credit, but that's, I, to me, that, that's a little bit of a, a small thing compared to what's been lost, you know, uh, getting into colleges and universities, I, I guess that will still happen, but it's, it's just, uh, you know, it's going to put a lot of turmoil into all of what normally a fairly rigorous, but uh, a normal process. And uh, anyway, I just want to commend everybody again for the job they're done, the job they're doing, and hopefully the students can get through this, and especially the seniors. I mean, not just seniors at every level. You know, things happen in the spring that things people don't want to miss, and they're they're there's like a whole semester taken out of it. And at that age, you know that that's part of your life. So I, I just think it's a a bad situation but anyway again that's uh we'll, we'll we'll shoot for the best and hopefully that's what happens that's all i have to say thank you john uh miss smith yes um i for one am fully supportive of uh going ahead and canceling the in-person classes through the end of the year um, and keeping the schools closed. And I want you to recognize the weight that that carries for somebody who is currently homeschooling their FSUSD child <laughs> while she works from home. Um, it is, it's challenging and you know there are benefits and there are disadvantages for um, us and every family is grappling with that themselves. But, um, I worry that there is going to be a false sense of security that is going to take over communities across the country very shortly uh, when they do see the benefits of the downward trend um, starting to take place from all of the social distancing that we're doing and 
as such, they're going to say, oh, well, we can fully resume our every you know day-to-day -day life. And um, I think it's in the best interest of not just our students, not just our staff, but the greater community as a whole, if we do not fall into that and go ahead and um, you know keep keep our families at a distance, <laughs> literally, um, and and try to reconvene it when things come back um, at the beginning of next year. And I hate to say that, you know, um, I think one of my uh, biggest disappointments was when um, I think it was during the high school senior presentation where it was announced the graduations were going to be called off. And I really am hopeful that we can find a way maybe to um, not cancel them, but somehow postpone them. You know, these kids have worked a really long time um, to earn those diplomas. And, you know, some may not want to, some may not be able to um, come back and actually walk and receive their diploma. But I feel like we should afford them the opportunity to do that if, yeah, that's something that they choose to do. So I'm hopeful that we can look into that. But and kudos I, to everybody, as it's been said many times, kudos to everybody. <laughs> you know, and I'm gonna just echo what uh, board member Smith said. We all, all of us, that's the highlight of our school year is watching those graduations because that's what we're in this business for is to get kids over that, that graduation line. and. Um, so it is disheartening that those ceremonies, as we currently know it, won't exist. But um, our high school uh, administrators and teachers and our secondary education staff are already looking at some creative ways that we can do that. And it may mean that we have to postpone. But right now, um, just to be perfectly honest, we don't even know if we'll be able to come back physically this summer. Um, I think Ms. Smith talked about the false sense of security. And so we are planning to try to do some virtual uh, summer learning programs, but that also is dependent upon funding. So we have to look at how much we can afford and what we can do uh, this summer to also continue on. And then um, there's always a silver lining because we know that for years, our district has been looking at starting a virtual school. And so we've kind of gotten a jump on that. And so we're already in the process of uh, opening a virtual school for those families. I don't know quite what that looks like yet. I'll bring it to the board for a future agenda topic. But we are looking at um, providing a virtual school opportunity because there may be teachers who have found that this is their niche and or students who have be looking at opening that in the fall. Pardon me, I had my mic off. Board Member Wilson, um, comments? Yes, uh, I've enjoyed the comments of the other board members and um, I, I could, I wish if I could ditto everything they've said, I would. Uh, the admiration for the creative employees, for the innovation, for the need for some kind of celebration or capstone recognition for the students who are wrapping up their time, et cetera. I, <clears throat> I hope, that community members wind up with a good sense of what's going on. It's uh, one of our priorities, I think, should be letting them know this is unprecedented and they don't know what's happening in the classrooms, in the, in the schools, in each kid's life. I've noticed an increase in uh, news in the newspaper and that, uh, that encourages me you know, if we can find ways to get the word out, um, I, uh, I I want every parent to think, yes, my kid has a teacher, and my kid is in touch with his teacher, and I want every parent to think I have a line to my kid's principal, either my kid's one teacher or, if <clears throat> secondary, then I'm in communication with. The principal either receiving a weekly newsletter i know a lot of principals do that or 
able to uh, email them. I want, uh, <clears throat> I hope everyone gets an accurate sense of what's going on in the classrooms. And I hope it's a positive thing. From what I hear, it is. But uh, this is a unique time that may never come again in their lifetimes, our lifetimes, of course it may, but I want them to, uh, to feel connected to the district and their schools and this institution um, <clears throat> at this historic time. Um, so uh, those are my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Uh, each board member, thank you for your comments. I couldn't agree with you uh, more heartily. Uh, the enormous amount of work uh, that our staff has done and our superintendent's leadership is extraordinary. It is just amazing the amount of detail uh, that is involved in just doing any of the things uh, electronically that we are doing. Uh, I will agree with um, Mr. Silva that our students, I'm just, I, I just can't imagine anything more discouraging than being a senior and missing the, all of the activities that go on was celebrating being a senior before the end of the year. So that is disappointing. But as Ms. Smith said, we cannot be too confident. We can't let our guard down too early and go back to normal too soon and then have a relapse and have everything worse than it was before. So I think I agree that we need to err on the side of caution. And if that means keeping our schools closed longer, as hard as that may be, I think that that's a necessity. One thing more, I, I, I'm i just thinking so many times uh, parents complain to, about teachers and how easy it is, you know, they have all this time off and it's no problem at all. And now I think some of them are getting a little bit of a taste of what it means to actually be with children all day long and having something planned for them to do every second and individualize it and meet their needs. It's not that easy. So uh, kudos to our superintendent for an amazing job. Kudos to our staff. And hang in there, students. We'll get through this. You'll have stories to tell your children in the years to come. And parents, please uh, work with us, support your kids, and get in contact with us, with the principal and with your teacher as, as much as you can. Thank you. Superintendent Corey, do you have anything to add at I the very wanna, end? I just do want to give a shout out to our parents because many of this is uncharted territory for them as well. And um, I think Board Member Smith said it, you know, some of these folks are working at home and trying to then also educate their child or maybe they've just lost their job and um, this family stress has been increased. And so we are very cognizant of that. And we're here to support. So um, Mr. Wilson's point is well taken. We have uh, a lot of support available. We still have some social emotional support out there. If, if people need to, they really do need to contact their school principals or their teachers because uh, one thing that we've just been so proud of is how everybody's come together at a time of crisis. And it's really great to be part of Fairfield Sassoon and to be part of this wonderful organization at this time. So I'm just wondering if there's anything else because otherwise, um, unfortunately, we're gonna have to make that decision and I'll, uh, Tim Gorey will be putting a official notice out tomorrow. So anything else that anybody needs to add? Okay, I think that ends the discussion, President Honeychurch. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to public communication. This is the opportunity for the public to address items that are not on the board meeting agenda. Public comment is only permitted on matters within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board. Um, you submit uh, a request to speak. Uh, speakers are requested to limit their comments to three minutes. And Ms. Corey, do we have any public uh, speakers? Yes, we do. Mr. George Gwynn. Okay. Turn it over to Mr. Gwynn. Um, good evening. Um, as you know, I try to advocate for the taxpayer. And back uh, when I was in school, 
there was about a week that was spent on uh, study of the Constitution. That was the, the main topic for the, the whole week. I hope uh, the, these days that's still happening. I see a lot, a lot of people that uh, are very fearful of uh, um, this uh, pandemic. And um, it seems to me that it's kind of overblown in some aspects because um, it affects uh, some people very severely, but the majority of people are not really that affected by it. And uh, think about this, if you had a war going on and you shut down the whole society uh, while you had the war going on, uh, it wouldn't work very well. And um, people need to be careful if they don't um, overreact. And um, I, I think that uh, this thing could be um, put back to the regular um, uh, system of operation in a lot less than six months. The, um, health department uh, director is talking about six months now. I, I think the things go on for six months. There are a lot of people going to get hurt um, that are in business, and that's going to be even worse than, than the actual uh, health issues. So I um, really hope um, you guys will be mindful of the, the Constitution. I have a, a video or two I'll be uh, emailing you uh, the next few days that gives you more information about um, those kind of things. Um, the other th uh, thing that I want to mention is that um, people will be doing homeschool, I guess, for the rest of the year. There's no guarantee that when you start back up again that you're going to have the same numbers um, of attendees. So that's something you need to think about as far as your budget's concerned. And um, I think that um, it was it's also mentioned that. Um, virtual schools uh, might uh, play a bigger part. For a lot of businesses, um, that's become a lot more important um, in other fields. And it could be that you need to reconsider some of your construction plans. Um, anyway, that's food for thought um, that uh, you might uh, consider because the more things you think about, the better decisions you can make. Um, you don't want to uh, forget any particular thing. So I guess that's about it for this comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on to the consent calendar, do we have any items to be pulled from the consent calendar? Hearing none, um, do we have any public comment on the consent calendar, Ms. Corey? Okay, Just hearing no public, comment. Um, Just as a reminder, Ms. Sunny Church, you're gonna have to pause because ah. it takes people a second to hit their mute button okay um, but there is no public comment on the consent calendar thank you david ice move approval joan uh, got second so we have a motion for approval from uh, mr isom and a second from Ms. scott yes is that correct eric Martinez. okay we're ready for the roll call aye eric. joan got Aye. Judy Honeychurch? Aye. David Isom? Aye. Jonathan Richardson? Aye. John Silva? Aye. Bethany Smith? Aye. Craig Wilson? Aye. Okay, motion carries. We'll go on to action items 12A, review and potential approval of resolution number 58, 1920, designing public works projects as an essential governmental function and delegating authority to designate further K-12 public works as projects. an essential government function. There is no uh, presentation. Uh, is there any public comment? Yes, there is, Mr. George Gwynn. Good evening. Um, I, I think this is another thing you need to go over with a fine tooth comb because it's, um, it's, um, it's something that uh, looks like it's uh, changing overnight. Um, I think what uh, was essential a few months ago might not uh, be looked at the same way now. 
So um, it's also a possibility that you, maybe you can use that money for something else too. I, I know there's limitations on what uh, you're authorized to do on that, but um, maybe there's some way that you could work some kind of exchange on some of the things that um, might um, help in other areas. Um, if not, then that, it makes it um, a lot more difficult to, to continue. So um, I would hope that um, you look um, at everything and leave no stone unturned because this, um, otherwise um, it can come back to haunt you. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments? Yes, I have a comment. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Scott. I would really like to see us persevere on this to get these projects finished so that the kids can enjoy our new facilities that are completed in September instead of having come back to school and still have construction going on. I think it's a time that's a silver lining with this that we could actually get all this work done so that our kids can enjoy it this coming year. I would really like to see us persevere with this. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Any other comments from board? Members? It is important to keep in mind also that the uh, Measure J funding has a time frame that it must be spent within. And so we need to make sure that we're not delayed um, in spending what we have. I would agree with that. Any other uh, board comments? If not, may I have a motion for approval? Bethany Smith, yeah. no approval. Second. Eric Cortez, second. Okay. Roll call, please. Eric Cortez. Aye. Joan Gott. Aye. Judy Honeychurch. Aye. David Isom. Aye. Jonathan Richardson. Aye. John Silva. Aye. Bethany Smith. Aye. Craig Wilson. Aye. And that carries. So we'll move on to 12 B and C. Uh, B is, they're both bids. So B is review and potential approval of award bid 20 F 135 roofing upgrades at Oak Brook Academy and Susun Valley to best contracting services. Uh, no presentation there. And C is review and potential approval of award bid 20 F 134 roofing upgrades at various sites to Waterproofing Associates Incorporated. No presentation. Are there any public comments, Ms. Corey? No public comment. Thank you. Um, is there any? Okay, well, first, is there any board discussion? Okay, we'll take uh, Joan Gott's uh, move approval. Is there a second to Ms. Dave Scott? Isom, second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Eric Cortez. Aye. Joan Gott. Aye. Judy Honeychurch. Aye. David Isom. Aye. Jonathan Richardson. Aye. John Silva. Aye. Bethany Smith. Aye. Craig Wilson. Aye. Okay, motion carries. 13A. This was a a public hearing, the disclosure of initial joint proposal between Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District and APA 2020-21 contract negotiations. No presentation is, may we have the public hearing open? Okay, thanks public. No comments. Public hearing closed then. Thank you. Uh, B, review and potential approval of initial joint proposal between Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District and, and APA reopeners for the 2020-2021 contract negotiations, no presentation. Um, this was on last meeting's agenda. And does anyone have any questions regarding this? Any discussion? 
Motion. Okay, may I have a motion to approve the B? Okay, was that Mr. Isom? Yes. Mr. Isom, did you make the uh, motion? I did. Okay. Yeah, David Isom of approval. Okay, second. 13 at B. Jonathan Richardson, second. Okay, Judy's um, needs to reconnect, but we're going to have um, Melissa do the roll call. Eric Cortez. Aye. Aye. Joan Gott. Aye. David Isom. Aye. Jonathan Richardson. Aye. John Silva. Aye. Bethany Smith. Aye. Craig Wilson. Aye. Madam Superintendent, as discussed earlier, um, should we continue with the meeting until Judy's back on? Yes. Um, last meeting. Yeah, we should. Um, I mean, yeah, last I'm meeting, uh, our past president Isom was able to chair this meeting virtually, and I did ask him just in case. Our president loses connection if he would take over. So, uh, past president Isom, we are on um, item 13C. So, we need to carry that motion. It's been moved and approved. We just voted on that. That motion does carry. We're on item 13C, the review. Judy's back. Yes, my computer uh, ran out of batteries <laughs> because I was on so long. So, um, where are we now? See, your most, your last, uh, thirteen B carried. Thirteen, okay. So now, thirteen B and C carried. I'm sorry. David, can yeah. you continue just for a little bit longer? I need to get my, need to get settled here. Go on to the next one 13, for me, David. Please. Thirteen B and C just passed. We're at fourteen A. We're at thirteen C. Thirteen C. Review and potential approval of the revised. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 13C review and potential approval of revised Fairfield Sassoon Management Association certified management salary schedule. No formal presentation. Any members of the community speaking? No public comment. Any board members. Move approval. David Isom, move approval. Is there a second? Bethany Smith, second. Ready for the roll call? Eric Cortez. Aye. Joan Gott? No. Judy Honeychurch? Aye. David Isom? Aye. Jonathan Richardson? Aye. John Silva? John Silva, John. unmute your mic. Oh, sorry, aye. Bethany Smith? Aye. Craig Wilson? Aye. The ayes have it. That motion does carry. We're at item 14A. Okay. David, I think I'm back together. Um, I can take it from here. Thank you for right. your help. Uh, 14A, review and potential approval of temporary modifications of graduation requirements in board policy 6146.1, high school graduation requirements. Uh, any public comment on this? There's um, public comment, Mr. George Gwynn. Um, good evening once again. Um, a lot of times when uh, people transfer on to college, uh, they don't have uh, the core that they really need to uh, proceed on and then they have to take remedial stuff to get up to speed. I really hope uh, with the years shortened the way it's been that you guys have gotten uh, everything uh, lined up so people aren't going to have uh, major problems if they're graduating this year and also um, that you provide them with some kind of uh, uh, checklist of places to go to get help uh, if they do have problems so that uh, maybe they won't be as in bad a shape as they would if they were totally clueless about uh, 
uh, they're going to uh, keep on uh, proceeding through college. So um, I realize it's uh, kind of a last minute thing, but um, this is something that you guys really need to, to follow up on to make sure that people are able to uh, do well in the future. Thank you very much. There are no more public comments. Thank you. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you, um, Superintendent Corey. Okay, and I'm just gonna ask board members Gott and Honeychurch, if you could um, mute your mics. There's a little background noise, thank you. Um, so one of the things, as I mentioned earlier, is that our state superintendent of public uh, instruction said that we had to make sure that we are not harming any students due to these unprecedented school closures. So there were a lot of discussions about what that means. And uh, Fairfield Sassoon has been known for their high expectations and their um, high graduation requirements. In fact, we have more uh, rigorous graduation requirements than many of our neighboring districts. And so we didn't take this lightly when we were looking at this temporary reduction of of uh, graduation requirements to have the board consider. However, we want to make sure that we are not harming those students who uh, maybe weren't 100% on track to graduate, but boy, in the last semester, they kick it into high gear and they get their graduation requirements done. And so um, there was a lot of analysis that went into this decision and this recommendation. And I am going to turn it over to Kristen Witt, who is our Director of Secondary Education to make her presentation. Thank you. Good evening, Superintendent Corey, Board President Honeychurch, and Governing Board members. Please give me a moment to pull my presentation up on the screen. We wholeheartedly support that the governing board desires to prepare all students to obtain a high school diploma so that they can take advantage of opportunities for post-secondary education and employment. COVID-19 is impacting our world, our country, our communities, and our children. The district understands that all families are impacted by the closure of school campuses and the transition to distance learning. These closures particularly impact our high school seniors who were months away from completing the graduation requirements set forth by the state of California and the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District. Given the impact of COVID-19 and the guidance from the California Department of Education, staff is bringing forward a recommendation to the governing board this evening to temporarily modify board policy 6146.1 high school graduation requirements. The recommendation is to reduce local graduation requirements that exceed the state's minimum graduation requirements in the education code. The recommendation for Armio High School, Early College High School, Fairfield High School, the Public Safety Academy, and Rodriguez High School seniors graduating in the 2019-2020 school year is to temporarily reduce the current credit requirements listed in Board Policy 6146.1. These reductions include the following changes under course requirements. Item number one, reducing from cor four courses in English to three courses in English, a change from 40 credits to 30 credits. Item number two, reducing from three courses in mathematics to two courses in mathematics, a change from 30 credits to 20 credits. Item number eight, reducing the overall elective credits from 70 to 40 credits. This recommendation, if approved, would temporarily reduce the overall required credits to graduate from 230 to 180 for this year's senior class at Armio High School, Early College High School, Fairfield High School, <clears throat> excuse me, the Public Safety Academy, and Rodriguez High School. The chart in front of you on slide three provides the breakdown by subject area of the proposed graduation requirements for Armio High School, Early College High School, Fairfield High School, the Public Safety Academy, and Rodriguez High School seniors should the governing board move to approve the recommendation this evening. I would now like to provide the governing board an opportunity to discuss this recommendation and ask any clarifying questions. 
Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Witt, Mrs. Witt, sorry. Uh, I will just go down the, the uh, with each board member to see if you have any questions or comments in regards to this motion. Um, Mr. Cortez? Yes, um, I was wondering, since we're continuing with online uh, learning, why is there a need to lower the graduation requirements? That's an excellent question, Board Member Cortez. And the impact on our students uh, being able to work from home um, greatly differs from student to student and location to location. And not every student has the same opportunities to engage in the distance learning um, as their counterparts. And due to that fact, we want to ensure that all students are able to still make the, meet the graduation requirements despite the impacts that this distance learning has put on them that was at no fault of their own. And I'm just going to give an example. For example, let's say you had a high school senior um, this year that was right now the last grading period had a D minus or an F in English. Um, perhaps from now to the end of the year, they could have had the opportunity to improve that failing grade and thus pass English. Now we can't guarantee that everybody has that access and availability in order to show that improvement. And so we just really wanted to ensure that we're not harming anybody because of no fault of their own that they can't attend school. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Scott. I want to clarify this in my own mind. The graduation requirements that we're talking about now are straight out the graduation requirements and not connected to the A to G's that have to do with the CSU requirements for entrance, correct? That is correct. This does not change what the A to G requirements are for minimum eligibility to a CSU or UC. This is just for earning a high school diploma from FSUSD. Okay, then what arrangements are we making for the kids to be able to continue on with their A to G's? Thank you. So this actually um, does not adversely impact those students. Um, let me give a bit of um, information and background right now as it relates to UC and CSUs. Um, the university has temporarily suspended some of its requirements for admitted students to ensure that they are able to enroll as planned. It also expects to work with students to adjust financial aid packages if family financial circumstances have changed. Uh, UC campuses will provide maximum flexibility to students who need more time to meet registration, deposit, and transcript deadlines. The university also expects to work with students to adjust financial aid packages if family financial circumstances have suddenly changed. And in addition, the UC has temporarily relaxed some undergraduate admissions policies to ensure high school and transfer students are not penalized by their inability to earn, say, letter grades for academic classes or take standardized tests during the COVID-9 pandemic. Um, FSUSD staff, as mentioned earlier, are recommending that letter grades continue for students in FSUSD and are working with FSUDA on language that will help to ensure students are held harmless during this time, as suggested by State Superintendent of Education. And additionally, coursework that is needed to meet the minimum entrance requirements has not changed. The courses needed to satisfy A to G requirements remain the same. And our recommendation this evening does not change that for students that are UC or CSU bound. Students will still need to satisfactorily pass those courses with a grade of C or better this semester. Our recommendation this evening will positively aid hundreds of seniors that are not preparing for the A to G eligibility, but are working diligently to earn a high school diploma. Okay, then I have one last question. What is happening with the SAT tests and the advanced placement tests that students take when they're entering CSU and UC? Uh, thank you for that question. So the advanced placement tests have not been canceled. Um, those tests, <clears throat> excuse me, are going to be administered online for students that are still interested in taking those exams. Um, the international baccalaureate exams um, have been canceled and there are portfolio pieces that students are submitting in lieu of the tests and the UCCSU are actually um, looking at uh, adjusting their policy as it relates to the SAT scores as well. 
I do want to mention, um, you know, I really encourage all of our board members to uh, walk or look at that frequently asked questions that we provided on Monday, because um, all of a lot are answered in those that question document and so I can send it out again uh, but we just want to make sure that you are aware that many of these things questions or wonders that you're uh, and provided in that document thank you okay mr. Isom do you have uh, questions or comments not just yeah just a comment I'm glad that they're, they were following the um, California Department of Education recommendations. I know that they have relaxed their A to G's for the CSUs. I know that really has nothing to do with us. That's the state system and the CSU UC system, but they have relaxed a lot of their uh, requirements. They're also, from what I understand, the SAT is not required at a CSU this year, um, but they're going to be tracking persons that did get in without the SAT uh, scores, and they will be finding it very difficult next year if they really can't cut the mustard. So I was telling parents that are gonna be exempt from that this year that they still have to work really, really hard. And I also wanna say, I'm glad that we're looking at this through an equity lens, because again, a lot of, uh, all of our kids don't have the same access. And so looking at it through, a, through an equity lens, that allows us to do what's best for all the children that we are educating. Shout out to Christian. Mr. Richardson. Do you have a comment or a question? Hearing none. Wait, he hasn't unmuted his mic yet. I don't know if there we go. Oh, okay. Oh, glitch right there. Um, I just want to say to Miss Witt and her team, um, again, we've been put in a position to where we've had to produce in a very extreme short amount of time and continue to hold on strongly to the values that we've put in place as a school district. Um, and I just think it's, 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 it's very exciting to hear other school districts reaching to do things that we've already achieved that has prepared for us to have what I believe has probably been the smoothest transition than that any school district could have with something that is completely unexpected. So the attention to detail um, that has gone into um, the temporary suspensions related to the, the board bylaws for the A, to, A through G requirements and just the ultimate graduation requirements. Um, I just applaud the team for basically coming together and making it happen. Um, and again, from our statement earlier in the board meeting, our students now get to see what it looks like to be resilient. They get to see what it means to innovate, what it means to adapt to change. And as they transition from being students under our care, especially those that are seniors, into becoming the next leaders in our community, it's going to be moments like this that they look to guide them as they move forward and make decisions, recognizing that we never quit, we never gave up but we made sure that we continue to move forward, making sure that they were priority number one. Mr. Silva. Uh, yeah, I don't have any questions again, just a statement. And I would like to, you know, kind of echo what Mr. Isom said that, you know, it, it really is an, an equity thing. And uh, many students would have never been, uh, you know, impacted. Uh, and there are some students that will probably slip through that, you know, normally would not have, but, you know, we have to err on the side of, of those that, you know, we're going to um, be able to, to do it, get into universities, get into colleges, uh, but maybe would slip through the cracks because of, uh, you know, they don't have uh, computer hookups at home. They may not even have a computer at home. And so, you know, it's those are the students that we have to, that we have to make sure and ensure to get the fairest shake in, in these, in these kinds of situations. So. Um, you know, to, to that, you know, I, I had expressed to the superintendent, you know, about some of these graduation requirements and, and we, we both agree that, um, yeah, it, we may get a few that are going to slip through that, you know, are just going to take advantage of it. But it, 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 those aren't the ones that we're trying to help. We're trying to help the ones that are really trying to make it and need this help 
and this is going to help them immensely to get into the colleges that they would have probably been able to get through or into, but uh, they would not have been able to. But anyway, that's that's all I'm saying. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Yeah, um, I sat in on this presentation when it was given to the families of the high school um, seniors. And um, I am a little disappointed that it went to them before it came to us because I'm concerned that when we do something like that, um, potentially if something changes, then we you know, throw some confusion their way. Um, so I'm not sure what the what the reason for the decision there was, but um, I was also sitting on, on the student leader uh, uh, hangout earlier, and uh, Ms. Witt, you had mentioned that there are a certain percentage of students that based on their um, where they are currently, that they were on track to go ahead and graduate if we reduce to these requirements and I missed the percentage and then I'm wondering as a follow-up to that if you have the percentage for who is on track with our current graduation requirements do you by chance happen to have uh, how many were not or that were if uh, we kept the requirements the same if that makes sense yes I think I understand your question and um, the portion that I was answering during the student leader meeting today definitely was um, emphasizing the students that attend San Mieto High School. And so that is going to be coming next in my presentation with respect to the proposed um, temporary uh, recommendations for the graduation requirements for San Mieto High School. And on that campus, there is a larger number of students that with the proposed reductions would have met the graduation requirements at this time. There's a much smaller number, really truly only about a handful of students at the comprehensives that will have met the requirements. And that's strictly due to the fact that seniors must take both government and economics during their senior year. And one of those courses um, is taken first semester and one of those courses is taken second. And so we do see a few students that uh, transitioned into our district from other states or other districts that had completed both of those. And there are a few students that are on an accelerated track um, that may have already finished that. And in terms of the percentage of students that were on track for meeting our um, typical board adopted graduation requirements, um, if I were to look back at our data, um, we had roughly about 80, a little under 80% of the students that were currently on track. And part of that would take into consideration students being able to go to summer school and completing the credit recovery courses that they're currently enrolled in. I'm not sure, was that all of your questions, Ms. Smith, or did you have additional? Yeah, no, that's fine, thank you. Okay. Mr. Wilson. Um, yes, uh, two or three questions. One, are our requirements now at the state minimum if we make this change? No, but they're still higher. Second question, um, if uh, Mrs. Witt's estimate, perhaps 80% are on track, uh, to me, that sounds like for 80% of our seniors, this will have no effect. They will finish up their classes. They will meet our former minimum. And it, uh, but for those 10 to 20% who are in a tight spot, it will give them some flexibility to consult closely with their high school counselor and determine perhaps to drop one or two unnecessary ones and focus on one or two necessary ones to help them get through in a tighter situation. Is that a reasonable estimate? Yes, Mr. Wilson, that definitely is a reasonable estimate. And lastly, for uh, 11th graders, uh, this doesn't change a thing for them. They are required to finish up all their courses this year if they wanna be on track for, to graduate next year. Is that also uh, likely? Well, we are going to have to look at this for all of our high school students because everybody, freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors are all impacted by this uh, semester. And so we're going to have to analyze that and bring back maybe a different recommendation for next year and then the following year and the following year. I mean, obviously, a freshman who misses out has three years compared to 
two months to make up a class, but we still don't want to hold any student harmless, even if they're a freshman or sophomore or junior in high school. Does that mean that some perhaps 11th graders or 10th graders, we're anticipating not as many will uh, uh, pass their classes this semester as would have? Correct. We just don't want, we just don't know. We'll see at the end of this semester how that happened, what, what happens. Thank you. That's all I had. I don't have, uh, I don't have any additional questions to those that have already been posed. So I will turn it back over to Mrs. Witt. Thank you very much. So now I want to take a few moments to explain the differences between a comprehensive high school and a continuation high school. I need to explain the differences because we will be making a different recommendation to the governing board this evening for Samietto. Samietto's students earn credits every quarter as opposed to every semester at a comprehensive site. At Samietto, students are able to earn 60 credits in the same time frame that a student at a comprehensive site would only be able to earn 30 credits. Additionally, the course sequence for a student attending Samietto is unique to what the student needs as compared to a traditional sequence at a comprehensive site. This is all important to know because the impacts during this time of distance learning is compounded for a student attending Samietto. We took all of the factors into consideration as we developed a recommendation for the governing board. The recommendation before you this evening for Samietto High School seniors graduating in the 2019-20 school year is to temporarily reduce the current credit requirements listed in board policy 6146.1. These reductions include the following changes under course requirements. Item one, reducing from four courses in English to three courses in English, a reduction from 40 credits to 30 credits. Item number two, eliminating, oh, excuse me, reducing from three courses in mathematics to two courses in mathematics, a reduction from 30 credits to 20 credits. Item number five, eliminating the one course in visual or performing arts or foreign language, including American Sign Language, a reduction of 10 credits. And item number eight, eliminating the 70 elective credits. This recommendation, if approved, would temporarily reduce the overall required credits to graduate from 230 to 130 for this year's senior class at Samietto High School. The chart in front of you on slide seven provides the breakdown by subject area of the proposed graduation requirements for Samietto High School should the governing board approve the recommendations this evening. It is also important to note that this recommendation for Samietto mirrors the minimum state requirements for the state of California. I would now like to provide the governing board an additional opportunity to discuss this recommendation. Please note, staff recommends the temporary modifications to graduation requirements in board policy 6146.1 high school graduation requirements. Ms. Witt, could you just speak to the, um, the last slide in regards to the elective credits and why the decision was made to uh, go to zero elective credits? Absolutely. In addition to mirroring the minimum state requirements um, for graduation, uh, the students at Samietto, the majority of the courses that students at Samietto are recovering during this semester are elective courses. And they are, as I had mentioned previously, greatly impacted by distance learning. Students at Samietto, not only are they accelerating in their credit recovery, they highly rely on that one-to-one -one interaction with their teachers on the campus. And now that they've been forced into the systems learning, it greatly impacts that. Um, and so that's definitely an added factor in looking at reducing the electives completely. Not only does it mirror the state minimum requirements, those are the majority of the courses students are recovering second semester. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll go down uh, to each board member as we've done before. So, Mr. Cortez, do you have any comments or questions regarding Sam Yeddo's recommendation? No. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Scott? No, thank you. Uh, Mr. Isom? Nope. Uh, Mr. Richardson? No, ma'am. Mr. Silva? Uh, no. Mrs. Ms. Smith. Nothing additional. Mr. Wilson. No. Okay. And I do not. 
So may I have uh, a motion to approve? Move approval. David Eisen. Second, Joan Gott. Okay, so that was Mr. Isom first and Joan Gott second. We'll have the roll call vote. Just a minute. Isn't there more to the presentation and the proposal? Uh, the adult, the adult education is on the next item, Mr. Wilson. Maybe that's what you're thinking. Okay. Okay. So roll call vote. Eric this Cortez. Is... Aye. Joan Gott. Aye. Judy Honeychurch. Aye. David Isom. Aye. Jonathan Richardson. Aye. John Silva. Aye. Bethany Smith. Aye. Craig Wilson. Aye. That motion carries. We'll go on to B, uh, review and potential approval of temporary modifications to graduation requirements and board policy 6200, adult education. Uh, no presentation. Is there any public comment? Yes, we have one public speaker, Mr. George Gwynn. Good evening once again. <clears throat> um, I would add uh, my uh, comments in item A to, to this one. People that are not uh, scoring very well on their grades should um, perhaps consider getting further uh, instruction or going to a junior college first before they proceed to a state college or university. And um, it's a lot easier to uh, um, have the skills and this goes straight through then uh, to get down uh, grade points and be on probation and try to make up to, to get off probation. So uh, anything you can do to help uh, people that are marginal uh, would be much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll turn it back over to uh, Mrs. Witt. Thank you very much. Please give me a moment again to get the presentation up. The district understands that all families are impacted by the closure of school campuses and the transition to distance learning. There is a particular impact on our adult school diploma candidates attending the Fairfield Sassoon Adult School. These students were also months away from completing the graduation requirement set forth by the state of California and the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District. Given the impact of COVID-19 and the guidance from the California Department of Education, <clears throat> staff is bringing forward a recommendation to temporarily modify board policy 6200, adult education, by reducing local graduation requirements, <clears throat> excuse me, that are beyond the state's requirements in the education code for those graduating in 2019-20. The recommendation for students graduating from the Fairfield Sassoon Adult School is to temporarily suspend portions of board policy 6200 adult education for any current adult school student working towards an adult school diploma for the 2019-20 school year. These reductions include the following changes to board policy 6200, reducing from 40 credits to 30 credits in English, reducing from 20 credits to 10 credits in mathematics, eliminating the fine arts foreign language of 10 credits and reducing the elective credits from 35 to 15 credits. This recommendation, if approved, would temporarily reduce the overall required credits to graduate from 180 to 130 at the Fairfield Sassoon Adult School. The chart in front of you on slide 10 provides the breakdown by subject area of the proposed graduation requirements for the Fairfield Sassoon Adult School should the governing board approve the recommendation this evening. I would now like to provide the governing board an opportunity to discuss the recommendation. And please note, staff recommends the temporary modifications to the graduation requirements in board policy 6200 adult school. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cortez, do you have any comments or questions? No, no comments or questions. Thank you. Mrs. Gott? No, thank you. Was that a no? No, thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Isom. I do not. Mr. Richardson. I do not. Uh, Mr. Silva. Uh, no. Mr. Smith. Uh, pardon me, Bethany. Ms. <laughs> Smith. Sorry. Ms. No, Smith. Okay. <laughs> 
It's okay. I answered to just about everything. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just curious about what does the typical um, student uh, who's attending the adult school um, look like? You know, or is that somebody who didn't graduate on um, when they should have out of one of our high schools, or is it an adult um, who just never got their high school diploma? It's a combination of both and. I mean, if you take a look, we are serving a lot of our seniors that did not graduate from high school, but we do also have a lot of adults who come back who just have some graduation requirements. I mean, if you've ever been to a high school grad or I mean, adult school graduation, you know some of those very moving success stories. Um, Ms. Wood, is there anything you want to add to that? No, that's exactly what I would have said as well. Is that it, Ms. Ms. Smith? Yes, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, Mr. Wilson? No. Okay, and I do not have any additional questions or comments. May I have a motion to approve? So moved. Joan Gott? Is there a second? Eric Cortez, second. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Eric Cortez? Aye. Joan Gott? Aye. Judy Honeychurch? Aye. David Isom? Aye. Jonathan Richardson? Aye. John Silva? Aye. Bethany Smith? Aye. Craig Wilson? Aye. Before we move on, I think that motion carried, but before we move on, I just want to once again thank our educational services team for all their hard work and consideration um, as they brought forth these requirements to our governing board. So uh, kudos also again to Kristen Witt. You did a fabulous job tonight presenting, so thank you. Ditto that, Superintendent Corey. Absolutely an excellent presentation. We are now to adjournment and we will be adjourning before, the meeting. Oh, excuse me, sorry, oh. Board President Honeychurch. I just have one other announcement before we adjourn. The um, congratulations speeches or the speeches from our um, students that were recognized today, they will be included on our YouTube uh, video when this is posted. So people will be able to see that if you wanna go back and review. And then before we sign off, I just wanna thank our staff once again. This uh, virtual meeting was the first for us the, with all of our board members uh, coming in from a remote location. And it took a ton of coordination on uh, the part of our staff. And I just wanna thank them all because while it may have looked easy somewhat from home, there was a lot of uh, time and energy and a lot of hours that went into making this possible. And so just thank you to all of them. Madam President. Uh, Mr. Isom. Yeah, I wanted to just say too as well, if it's okay to shout out especially to superintendent staff to Martha and the gang and Linda, you know, they, they really connected with all of us to make sure that we were able to uh, have this virtual meeting using this platform. And it's really, in, really a lot of work as a um, person who presents every Sunday uh, for the last three weeks, we've not been able to present in our normal ways. And it's a lot of work that goes into even a 45 minute uh, presentation, a whole lot of work. So I know that They've been working hard and I just wanted to say thank you. And I too want to say thank you for their help. And David, thank you for your help and uh, stepping in when my computer died. So this is all new to me. So there is just a, a ton of flexibility that you need to have. So thank you, David, for your help. Um, and now we will and adjourn. finally wait. We have three people, remember, who have to stay on and do their homework. Oh, so thank you. You know yeah. who you are. So when you hang up, those people who Not need to stay, me. please, Not please me. stay. <laughs> and then also just as a um, reminder, board members, if you could, please read your Friday letter because I do put a lot of pertinent information. It will be posted tomorrow. I will continue to give you an update. It's a lot of down in the weeds detail, but it does show the level of work that our staff members are doing by department. So please look for that tomorrow. May, I make, now. Comment, May yeah. I make a comment, please? Yes. 
I would like to thank Martha Pierce for helping me through all of this tech stuff because I am the least capable of the board members of doing this. And I would not have made it if she had not been there holding my hand. Thank you, Martha. Oh, Joan, you can do it. <laughs> no, no, it's scary. All right. I think now, we're, now we're ready for adjournment. And always, it just... I wish I could just say meeting adjourned, but we are going to be adjourning the meeting in memory of Dorothy Dittar, a retired FSUST teacher. Meeting adjourned. Uh, David Isom is still on the line, but I did my board uh, evaluation. It was received, is that right?